I'm calling the Committee on Facilities and Capital Planning to order. I declare that a quorum is present and um, note that the media has been notified and given proper notice pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act. The first agenda item is the community meeting discussion. Dr. Tony Parker, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair and board members. Just wanted to talk to you briefly this evening on your plans for the community hearing that's going to be held at St. Marie and anything that the board would like to like for me to do at that meeting, I'll be glad to do that. And I have talked to the superintendent and also to Katie Orban, our public information officer. And uh, I think we've got an outline, Mr. Superintendent, uh, as to what you think the best approach would be to, at this meeting. Well, uh, yes, sir, uh, Dr. Parker, and thank you for your opening comments. And I do want to reiterate that we talked this morning, and a lot of the, a lot of the community comments came from um, the standpoint that why didn't the board do some of this sooner? But the truth of the matter is, this plan has been was being developed and worked on even before my arrival. Uh, is that right? That's Tony? correct. I think so. It has been. Uh, and it's not, and it's a plan that is that is not common in this state, but it is very detailed and it's ongoing, and the work is not anywhere near complete. But it is work that is uh, taking our our capital needs from building, design, location. Um, prototype models, um, where the growth is, lots of things into consideration, um, and to give the board as much information as we humanly can in order to make really good, sound decisions. Uh, the decision that you're faced with is, and, and as a result that we'll be getting more feedback from the community, is not one that uh, that you take lightly, and I commend the board for having another meeting to to get any concerns. Um, and different board members have, have at different times have suggested that we, and I think it was really there are really good suggestions about what kinds of um, of recommendations that we might have. While it's not our place to recommend which of these options or even a hybrid of these options, you could come up with your own. Uh, our job is to give you as many choices as possible that are viable for, for your communities uh, because you've certainly lived here, uh, many of you have lived here all your lives, and, and you know the intricacies of the communities much better than we do. Um, and, and, and in our past, we've done work um, separately. I mean, Tony in Johnston County, me in Franklin County, North Carolina. So uh, this is not an unusual event for us, but, but we kind of put our heads together with experiences and with cabinet staff. And I, and I thought that we should offer these recommendations. Of course, I want to make it clear. These are not decisions. These are things that I would recommend for the board to consider um, for the public. Um, number one is all rising 10th, 11th, and 12th graders in the modified attendance zone, whichever one that is, would have the option to remain at Cane Bay High School. Uh, essentially, that means all current and next year's Cane Bay High School students, if they're rising up to the 12th grade, to remain there. When you give uh, people the option, it is emotional at the high school level, and you want to try to not get kids to have to switch high schools any more than absolutely necessary, and we believe that that's a viable option. Uh, we do believe that, uh, I do believe that the rising ninth grade students in the modified attendance zone um, should attend Stratford High School beginning August 2019. Um, that's rising ninth graders, not current ninth graders. There are some suggestions uh, that I would recommend that you consider. Uh, any rising ninth grade students who have established athletic eligibility slash presence uh, would have the option to attend Cane Bay. We do have some eighth graders that actually play 
varsity sports at their high schools and I would recommend that if those students have established that presence that you consider grandfathering them. Uh, the sibling clause, I think that's really important. Um, you know, I, I, I teased um, Mr. Barrow the other day that if we were brothers, uh, you know, and he were the running back and I were defensive back, I wouldn't want to be trying to tackle him on Friday night. So if we're brothers a couple of years apart, you would want, we would want to be in the same school. So siblings residing in the same household that would attend high school in the same calendar year would have the option to attend Cane Bay High if their older sibling remains a student there. So we would try to keep siblings together and not um, split them up. We were asked to look at some transportation issues and um, this is a little bit problematic for us. And I want to be very clear to the public, though I would like very much to be able to provide transportation for students who make the choice to remain at Cane Bay High, um, I'd like to provide the transportation. I, we really don't have the resources to commit to two separate attendance zones for transportation. Our recommendation is that any student who meets the above criteria and chooses to remain at Cane Bay would have to provide their own. Um, and that's, that's a little bit sticky, but high schoolers generally can find a way to school. Currently, we transport 362 students in the Sangaree area to Cane Bay High, and we're not, I'm not confident that we could adequately transport them uh, to Cane Bay and to Stratford. It would be adding additional routes. Uh, we have shortages of drivers now, and I think it would be extremely problematic to do that. Um, there could be, now we're not going to be able to anticipate every single situation. Every, you know, there's just, it's too, human, humanity's a little bit too complex to just anticipate everything. So uh, we might learn uh, some individual circumstances from our families Thursday night that we don't know and that, that we haven't covered. And we could look at those individually on a case-by-case -case basis and either handle them administratively or an appeal to the board, much like attendance lines appeals now. But we would try to handle as many as possible um, uh, administratively on a case-by-case -case basis. And that's those are our recommendations in terms of grandfathering. Um, I've been in districts, Tony's been in districts where we've grandfathered just the senior class. I've, I've been in districts where we've grandfathered the junior and senior class. Um, and I believe that this would be the first time that I've actually uh, grant, would recommend grandfathering the entire class, but I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Not the rising ninth graders, but the current, um, ten, the, the kids that would be in the 10th, 11th, and 12th next year. Of course, the seniors this year will be graduating, so they'll be out, but that's, uh, that, that's my recommendation uh, for the board to consider. Uh, the other thing is the format for Thursday's meeting. And there, there's, there's some desire, and of course, I understand that as superintendent, again, I'm just recommending, I'm not saying it has to be one way or the other. Uh, you've got some choices. Um, and I've been parts of meetings where there's been uh, open mics and talking and answering and promising and sometimes they don't turn out in a very productive way. They turn out to be, uh, so quite frankly, sometimes Donnybrooks where people are yelling at each other and nothing productive is happening. So what I recommend is that uh, perhaps release an agenda tomorrow afternoon for a, a regular board meeting format at Sangaree and that we have at least an hour for citizens' comments but they'd be structured much like citizen comments uh, at a regular board meeting. Then they would be recorded and answers would be given individually um, in writing. And hopefully some of the recommendations that I've outlined, if you choose to accept them, uh, may have answered some or many of the questions, but certainly not all of them. Uh, that would be my recommendation, but uh, Madam Chairwoman, I acknowledge that these are just recommendations and it really is at the discretion of the board as to um, what you do.
So if there's something I haven't covered or you would like to question, we'll, we'll take it down and we'll do it however you guys want to do it. Mr. Chair, I would uh, say to the superintendent's comments, I, I've never seen a board any more compassionate about an issue as this board is if these recommendations on grandfathering are adopted by the board. Uh, I think that is certainly the way to go to take into account the challenges that you have in meeting the needs of a fast-growing district. And, and one of the elements, and, and this is a bit uh, frustrating for me as your consultant, I, I don't think many people realize the extent of work that this board has done in evaluating facilities, looking at planning for the future, and really determining uh, how are you going to pay for new schools? As I read the comments from the community, I don't, I don't think there was an understanding of what you have gone through in trying to deal with uh, the issues that you've been faced with based on growth. And you, you may want to look at sharing some of that information at this meeting to help the public to truly understand that you have been doing a lot of work and a lot of effort has gone into this process. The key elements remaining for you is how you're going to pay for the things that you need as, as far as new construction. Uh, you're moving forward on prototype models. You're moving forward on developing new contracts to address uh, architectural needs construction needs in the district, uh, you're going to be changing the paradigms that you've been faced with as far as these concerns um, have been imposed upon the board. Uh, but I, I would commend you for the listening that you've done, the compassion that you've had in that listening, and the determination you've got to do what's right for the students and what's right for this community. Uh, any way I can assist you with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll be glad to do that. <clears throat> the redistricting here is just one piece of that puzzle, as you well know. I'm not sure the public truly understands that. I think uh, about your points. Well taken. I think that explaining sort of the process we've, we've gone through and the controls we put in place and all of the planning we've done, it just, this just being a small part of it, it would be helpful to explain that, I think, at this meeting, at least at the outset, and then hone in on this particular issue. And certainly with some brevity there and allowing the time for the you set aside for the community response, uh, I think is, is important. Uh, but I, I, I would commend... Uh, your consideration uh, for the recommendations the superintendent's made on grandfathering. I think those are excellent recommendations and pretty typical of this type of situation when you've got a real compassionate board that is concerned about the children and the families in the district. Any, any other discussion? Mr. Chair, uh, with the study before us on attendance zone, uh, that uh, Dr. Parker and and uh, firm did. Uh, can we expect if we just look f forward uh, with the fast growing district that we have? Can we fast forward to about ten, twenty years and and ask him to do the same thing with the entire district? Uh, I think that would be something that uh, the district will will benefit from if we could look forward. Uh, and and sort of you know look at the growth that is coming in, and uh, because it will impact the entire district eventually, and and we want to look at some of the other areas that it might impact. I mean, yeah, I think we've started that process. Some of it is, I would think, would be a guessing game 20 years from now, where developers I and mean, we have some ideas of some of the communities, like at least in my district, the. Uh, Point Hope or Cane Hoy Plantation and Cane Bay. There are certain areas we know now where there's going to be growth, but predicting where that's going to be in 20 years, 
well, may be somewhat difficult, but I mean, I think we can. I believe some of those studies, like you said, is going on are going on now. So right. I, I believe Dr. Parker are aware of some of those kind of things. So if we could get something like that in place, I, I believe it'll be helpful. We've got a plan, and the district has a plan in place to do just that. The key for us right now is building hard data as we move forward from here. Our first real hard data is this year, and we're going to be building upon that as we move forward. Uh, you got new developments being approved all the time in this district, and you got to be monitoring that on an ongoing basis. You've also got to look at how fast these developments are going to be built out to determine the need, school needs that you're going to have and really where those needs are going to be. Uh, your five-year plan, that's your beginning point. Uh, <coughs> right now, we, we really need uh, two middle schools and an elementary school pretty desperately right now. But as the board knows, your key on that is determining where you're going to get the funding to build these schools. Uh, typically, bond referendums have been used in the past. Uh, that's not the direction you really want to go in at this point in time. You're looking at impact fees. You're looking at sales tax in order to uh, fund the construction of schools. Uh, that's happened in Horry County. It's happening in Charleston County uh, and in Beaufort County. Those are the things that we're trying to get moving forward on right now. Determine your funding source. You know, a lot of your community really, they don't understand the financial issues that you're faced with as a Board of Education in looking at where you're going to get funding to build schools in the future. For the meeting Thursday night, um, I'd really like to put I like these guidelines, I think, based on the emails that I read um, and the feedback we had gotten, this answers probably a solid 95% of people's questions. Um, so I'd like to put that out in advance so people are prepared to discuss it. Um, and I want to follow the citizen comments so we can keep under control um, and we can set aside an hour. Katie, I guess if 20 people were good to go, if 30 people were getting iffy, if 40 people register, we'll have to talk about expanding that time. Um, people have complained in the past um, when we've had meetings and we let it get out of hand and that one or two loud people got to talk and other people weren't heard. So I really feel like we're going to have to be tight on the three minutes, hear people, and then, you know, have the video of it, um, and then let the district respond back to those folks. But I feel like if we can put the guidelines out in advance, that will help people understand how it'll impact their kid. Because I mean, really, people want to know what's going to happen to my child. Um, the other thing for the board to me is the other feedback I've gotten is just do something. Pick something so I know what my kid is going to do next year. Like we're holding people from being able to have IGP meetings because they don't know if their um, eighth grader is going to Stratford or going to high school to to Cane Bay. They can't have an IGP meeting. So we really need to um, start. This takes two readings, so we need two meetings. So we're going to hear the presentation. We're going to hear citizen comments. Do we want also an action item to take a first vote on approving the guidelines and a vote on A, B, a, B or C Thursday night so people can see the process moving along? That People are wanting us to act. So that's kind of, I feel confident we need to make the presentation. We need to put the guidelines out. And we need to have citizen comments. The thing that I'm not sure of is do we take action at that meeting um, after we've heard people? I feel like we would be confident to have a vote at that point in time. That would be the first reading. And then we would be able to have the second reading you know, at the next meeting. And we would be able to have a final answer for people. And we can communicate that it's just it's a first reading and that y'all can always change you know, things between the first and second reading so that people <coughs> understand that there is still room for for you all to have additional considerations. Compromise and consideration, which I think if you put out, here are our basic um, grandfathering guidelines, guidelines. And, and we will hear other, <laughs> we will hear other exceptions um, 
in a streamlined process, I feel like, you know, people will be happy to be heard. But those are the two things I've heard. Do something so my kid can have, an, have a meeting and know where we're going to school. Yeah, I think even if we vote on it and they know it's just first reading, they'll appreciate the fact that we're, like, at least by the next meeting, they'll know what it is because I think the uncertainty is part of the, the big fear. My, my other question is how – is there any way for us to get those guidelines out to the – the potentially affected parents on these three maps, like just by way of email or some other way to push it so to the them? The best way for us, and Miss Diane can talk about it too, is to send it to Sangaree Middle School parents. Um, all okay. Sangaree Middle School parents, um, we get these. And then also to push it out through our media outlets on our website and all of our social media platforms. But as soon as those parents get it, they are very helpful with us in posting on all the community pages, resident pages, so that it reaches a really um, good audience. We're members of some of those resident pages, so we also post um, information from the district for them. And I think it, we'll call them proposed, yeah. proposed um, grandfather guidelines, and then that'll let people know we'll have room to make, um, you know, changes, concessions, or different adoptions. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, I'd like to say first of all I, I appreciate Dr. Ingram and the the, uh, the staff coming up with these proposals uh, I will say that I'm I'm a little disappointed that we didn't take advantage of our opportunity to meet um, with cabinet and and explore some of these other circumstances that that are that are necessarily going to arise uh, out of our decisions and uh, I've gone through four of these in my 40 plus years in, in administration and in teaching and it's never easy it's always difficult because you're dealing with other people's children and and uh, it, it's a uh, it's a circumstance that they're not going to be pleased regardless of what happens but communication is is the key and I really would have liked the opportunity to at least have met and actually talked about these recommendations because there's one recommendation Dr. Ingram has spoken to, and that's the transportation issue that that I really, uh, I, I don't know how much of an issue it would be, but I'd like to discuss at least the option to allow these, these folks at least a one-year transportation to Cane Bay unless it's going to prove uh, too cumbersome or too difficult to do that. I'd like to ask Dr. Ingham, Dr. Parker, anybody who's, who's available, have we really researched the impact if we were actually going to, do, going to transport these students for on a one-year basis back to Cane Bay, the ones that we are allowing the opportunity to grandfather? Uh, because it seems to me the transition and the impact of actually making this decision would be would be less for the people involved if we at least offered them a year's transportation to Cane Bay. Perhaps that's not reasonable. I don't know. But I'd like to find out from Dr. Ingram if we've actually tried to look into that to see if it's viable. Yeah, Mr. Jackson, I think, did um, at least consider, you know, worked with Wes, I believe, and considered um, at least the younger students that could not drive. Uh, so, that, you know, we, so Dion, I don't know if you, Mr. Jackson, I don't know if you'd like to speak to that or not, or at least talk to the board about how you went about figuring that process out, because I know that was in your thought process. Um, in listening to your concern, Mr. Barrow, from the other meeting at Sang Sangaree, yeah. I believe we yes. talked about that, and and we certainly yeah. considered it. So, Mr. Jackson, um, in the spirit of trying to get the cabinet involved, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Jackson, if you would speak, because they have been involved, they just haven't had the back and forth with Absolutely. the board. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, sir. So uh, the situation that you're speaking of, um, and it kind of alluded to it earlier, essentially we would have one large attendance zone, the same one that we have now, and uh, the difficulty would be trying to arrange logistics to have the same amount of buses but send the same uh, kids to two different schools from the same attendance zone. Um, as it stands now, um, as we mentioned, the shortage of bus drivers, um, and you know we're pretty strapped in that department. Um, the Stratford, excuse me, the Westview lot, pretty strapped in, in that area as it stands, and it's 
pretty difficult to get the students to and from school to time on time um, currently. Um, uh, Dr. Ingram mentioned the 362 students that reside in the uh, Sangaree area that currently attend Cane Bay. Um, it, we do the math on that, 362 divided by roughly 50 or 60. That's a pretty decent amount of buses. Um, that we would then have to split because we would be responsible for getting the students not only to Stratford, but also to Cane Bay. Wouldn't that affect the start times of the two schools? Would you probably we, we have would, to change? We would have to alter. Cane Bay and Stratford would have to start at different times and, Correct. and get out at different times. We would have to alter the times to, to make the logistics work. So Mr. Fleming is, is, is concerned about this possible scenario and not having enough manpower or buses or changing uh, the schedules of the of the two high schools so uh, that's what I'm trying to that's yeah. what I'd like to know what is is how much of an impact is it what does mr. Fleming say is it is it is it going to present major issues or just minor issues for one year because I I really would like to see if we could possibly do that for one year because like you said dr. Ingram 10th graders don't normally drive, but juniors and seniors do, and they can normally uh, uh, carpool and so forth. But if it's not something that's reasonable, it's just something that I that was a very legitimate concern at the Sangaree meeting. I had several parents question the transportation issue, and we said we'd look into it to the best of our ability. And if we've done that, and if we're satisfied that it's not feasible, then we can report back that we've at least tried. But uh, that's, that's the reason for my comments. I wanted to make sure we made a good faith effort to look into it to see if it was plausible. If it's the desire, we could continue to explore. Um, but I, I do know that we, we do have limited resources uh, when in our entire transportation fleet, but especially in that area. I would like to say I agree with, with uh, the board chair that I think we need to, to make some judgments on this as quickly as possible, particularly with these these three scenarios here so that they can know. Now, in terms of the EIGPs, they could really go forward because it's electronic. They can transfer whether they are at whether they are at Sangaree Middle School now, where they can do EIGPs and it would just transport either back to Stratford or Cane Bay because they have the similar programs as fresh freshmen. So why would they be holding off? They should not be. They're probably holding off because each of our high schools, they do have different programs. But as far as the freshmen are concerned, the ninth grade courses are pretty much the same through all of our high schools in Berkeley County. They're electronic. You can... No, no. I'm, the, the, I understand you, the concept. I'm just saying maybe the person who said they weren't doing them was not accurate, but... I was told that they weren't doing them because they didn't know which high school they, the kids were going to go to. Are they saying the schools aren't doing them? Well, I, I actually addressed that issue with the schools at each of the schools administration a few weeks back. Okay. Um, so it may be that's the, old maybe news the, that maybe just the got parents here. maybe the parents holding off. Um, you know, with their with some trepidation about you know where their students will end up. But as far as the programming is concerned, the freshmen have to take you know pretty much specific courses during their freshman year. So, I do have one more question, and that's about the format. So we, and uh, we're gonna have a regular board meeting format with uh, citizens' comments. Now, the thing that that I heard, and I, I don't know if, it's, if I heard it correctly, was that we're not gonna actually answer, or if they have a question, we're going to take it under consideration and have a written response to them. That doesn't. Uh, that just, just as we do now. Those folks aren't aren't looking for a written response. They're you know it's it's a community forum and they really want to know some answers. But and I I, I think that would probably create more of a problem than actually having a, a Q and A. And I you, feel if like you we're going to be real clear at the beginning of what we're presenting and the guidelines, and then mm. we're going to let people speak to hear. Do they want A? Do they want B? Do they want C? Do they want um, some additional grandfather clause to be added? Um, but the back and forth 
debate that will allow some it to get loud that allow people to take over that we that is not a successful way to handle the community um, and i really feel like once you put these grandfather clauses out it's going to answer most of those direct questions i mean the the answer for my child who has this special need for this special situation we're not going to answer about that kid in public session anyway <clears throat> Yeah, I think if we're going to have a productive meeting, the, the hope is that, and Dave, your point's well taken, too, about the, if we're going to say there's no transportation, we've at least got to give them an explanation as to why and that we've looked into it. And so the hope is by going through these guidelines and explaining these things and then Tony having you, or Dr. Parker doing, um, explaining sort of big picture planning what we've been doing, hopefully we can alleviate a lot of the concerns so they know we've focused on this, we've looked at it, and then... Yeah, the hope is for citizen comments, and maybe we just say this outright at the meeting, is we, you know, we want to hear any concerns that weren't addressed by the guidelines and or which proposal people um, believe is the best and why for these things for input. Because otherwise, I mean, we could have eight community meetings in the format and it, you know, it's just not going to be productive. And so we've got to try to answer the questions in the most efficient manner, hear what people have to say, and then ultimately make a quick decision because otherwise it'll drag on forever well if they know we're going to vote on it at the end of the meeting maybe the maybe there's no need for a whole lot of discussion so as, as long as they know that there's going to be a at least some sort of a first reading and vote uh, that may that may alter their anxiety I think so. okay thank you we can communicate all that clearly we just needed to kind of hear from y'all what your expectations were and then we can start communicating through all of our outlets so that people know exactly what to expect and even like you said exactly kind of what y'all are hoping to hear and i'm um, hoping that the community will focus on to help y'all make a decision any other comments board members and i just want to be clear we we understand the trepidation and the seriousness and we're the administration we're we're more than happy to adjust whatever recommendations we've made uh, because we understand that this is a very difficult yet important board decision and I commend the board for being as transparent as, as you have been um, and as open and trying to be as accommodating as possible to as many people as possible um, and I, I, I just want the public to know that so thank you Let me I mean, just want to. I mean, as far as the board is concerned, should the board have a a consensus, you know, to what is it might be more feasible for us to look at versus waiting for that night to come up with a decision? I mean, you know, we're going to listen to what everybody is saying, but when we look at what is going to be a lot easier for logistics and for us to make this happen, you know, shouldn't the board? I mean, from a uh, from a facility perspective, know exactly where we are going with this. I mean, we should have more discussion so we can have you know, the pros and cons about which one of these is going to be most suitable for what we're trying to do. You know, so I think all three accomplish at least part of what we are trying to get done. I think the student numbers are similar. Um, I mean, my personal preference, I, I lean towards B or C um, because you don't scoop out part of the um, neighborhood, and that's Absolutely. what we've heard from people. Yeah. So I don't think A is preferred. I think B or C is, is preferred. Um, but I think all three will meet our facilities needs. So from the district perspective, it's the choice of the board of what um, meets the needs of the community because I think it's going to meet the facility needs. Right. And, and Mr. Wright, there are pros and cons to each one of the options. <clears throat> the original option that we shared with the board, the pro there was the number of students it was going to impact fit into the uh, seats available at Stratford High School more so than the other two. However, <laughs> the other two, B and C, they give you... <clears throat> better boundaries Absolutely. as far as 17 and 26 as being boundaries than the first option A gives you. It's a matter of you looking at all the options and uh, Mr. Wright, to your point, looking at the pros and cons of each one of them. 
and um, I just wanted to say, um, sorry to interrupt. I did have some people reach out to me um, concerned about Stratford then being overcrowded, um, depending on what one we go with. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, so, because I know you were laying it out for us, and I think C was the one that would m make Stratford ha have each seat filled. Would there be any overage at Stratford then with C? With C, it would be. Okay. The number that number of students you're going to capture after four years is going to put Stratford at an overcrowded. I think it's, I think it's, B. I think it's B. B is the bigger numbers. Yeah, it's B. B would be the bigger numbers. C. B, yeah. B is more aggressive. B, yeah. B has the larger numbers. Yeah. That's where you capture the entire St. Gary District. Right. Okay. So on the C, you have uh, the St. Gary District uh, split up, and on the Dorchester side of 26, those students would continue to go to Kane Bay. Uh, but you've got good boundaries there, and the number of students that you have there fit within the working model. The larger number of students is going to be uh, and your smaller number of students is going to be with A. And the problem with A, like you, the chair person said, is going, going to be uh, splitting that area. And you don't have a really good boundary uh, with A. But yes, I think, Frank, you and I maybe be the only as board members at least have been the only one that, the ones that have voted on and dealt with the attendance lines that specifically affected our district and it it is a tough decision i felt like at least when we voted on the daniel island philip simmons zones we, we at, at least i felt this way that the other board members gave us a lot of deference because it was affecting particularly our constituents and families we knew and so i'd like to do the same for both ann and dave to get y'all's thoughts on just because you you know these are the people that voted for you and that you communicate with regularly so what what which plans do y'all like I, I like c and 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 for two reasons <clears throat> number one I, i've spoken with some of the people down in sangaree a was just not a very feasible option for them at all <clears throat> we got some pushback about that um, splitting the neighborhood up and some of the kids i think play in youth organizations together you know within within the neighborhood um, they're more agreeable to option c because it doesn't have that tendency to split the neighborhood up and i like option c because you're not going to be facing in four years overcrowding at stratford whereas in, option B you're going to be facing that so my preference is C um, that that would be the direction that I would strongly advocate for we talk about the number of overcrowding what's the number of students that we talking about as it applies to Cane Bay and also Stratford in terms of where we are with total numbers for each one of those locations are we talking two three hundred out two three hundred students over the uh, Combination number or it's a, Stratford. There's a hundred students difference between the B and C. B and C. Would mm -hmm. you say a hundred a hundred relieved from Cane Bay going to Cane Stratford? Bay. Yes. Now over the course of the next four years, we're not going to know exactly right now. You know how many students are going to be going to Cane Bay and how many are going to be going to Stratford, because we're giving them the option. And 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 we and we kind of like almost know that and that's why we're looking at what's going to happen with a high school but in the future to come so we're going to deal with about two three hundred difference at one of the other schools and even if we miss it by you know 100 or two here and there that's going to happen with all the massive growth that we're going to experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that area so we're prepared for that i guess it's almost like what matt and i did and you know of course we were the board members from that part of the community so we met on several occasions at Daniels Island, Philip Simmons, Canhoy, and we did what was most practical for all of that community where we drew those lines, and the people were very happy. They expressed to us, but it made sense because we didn't want to move students from the island or Clemens Ferry Road or Canhoy. We made it to where it was most accommodating for where the parents live and where the students were 
and it worked out pretty well. We didn't have a whole lot of pushback on it. That's right. Would you not? Would you not? Yeah, say no. That? The process um, worked. The community felt like they were heard, and we, you know, we did use a lot of the kind of obvious landmarks to to draw the lines and that sort of thing. I mean, there's always going to be a few people that are upset, but right. they have the option to file an attendance appeal, and so ultimately it, it worked um, very well. I felt like. Yeah. And, and you're always going to get a few that will have. You know, following attendance appeal here and there, but we made it work. I thought we did. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest difference you have is when you open up a new school. Mm -hmm. You were opening up a new school at that point in time. Here, you're changing <coughs> the boundaries based on the overcrowded conditions that you have at one school, and you're shipping students to another school. Yeah. And the, the numbers really—you got to look at the numbers here to determine the capacity and what you're going to be able to do at Stratford and how much relief you're going to be getting at Ken Bay by selecting the option that you eventually select. Um, but you, you got about 100 students difference here. Um, and you got it's about a, hundred, a little over 100 students more with B than you have with C. But if we're looking into the future, five years, Ken Bay is going to be filled with all the growth that's going out there. Yeah. And we'll be able to keep up with it with construction. You know, so if we say, okay, we want to keep this 100 students in Stratford, you know, that may give Cane Bay an extra year to not explode again. Yeah, the downside is we have to do this twice as opposed to just doing it once. Yeah. Dr. Parker, I just had a question about, did we at one point um, talk about adding on to Cane Bay? Yes, mm -hmm. and, and that's an that. option down right. the road in looking at uh, the future of smart renovations. So that's beyond your five years. Okay. The media needs that we've got in the plan uh, really are looking at uh, the next five years. Now, the plan was delivered to the board last year. Mm -hmm. So you're in the second year of that plan. And to... Uh, last time in our meeting, um, where's the high school as far as planning and building a, a new high school? Uh, you, you're going to re really have to work hard over the next five, six, seven years in preparing to do just that. In building a high school, you, you know the amount of time after building Phillips Simmons, how, how much time it's going to take right. in the construction process also have to have time in the planning process there as well. Uh, so what we're trying to do is honor some additional time by making this shift, and this is the first step in uh, following through with our five-year plan. Mr. Barrow, as to your, sorry, Thank reference. You. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's there's a, several things that I'd like to to point out, number one, um, option B uh, sends approximately 186 kids next year to Stratford from Cane Bay, or that would have gone to Cane Bay. They're currently in Sangaree. Option C would send 170. So you're only talking about 16 kids in one year. And over the course of four years, it's only 100 students. So let me just say that I think... B being 100 more over yes, time. Over okay. a four-year period, B would be, four, be 100 students more over a four-year term, which is almost, uh, which is acceptable to me because Cane Bay in four years is again going to be overcrowded because of the, the potential growth. Stratford will be overcrowded uh, by about probably one to 200, regardless of which of these scenarios. So I'm looking at the, at the contiguous, uh, contiguous circumstance here. If you do option B, it's all contiguous. Everything is consecutive. Second thing, those students, before there were ever was a Cane Bay, all of them went to Stratford. Every one of them, okay? And the third thing is, look geographically. We talked about this last time. Geographically, which high school is closest? Stratford. 
Stratford is closest. It takes less time to get to Stratford than it does to Cane Bay from this section over here. And all the school bus has to do is keep going straight down that line. And you're only talking about 16 kids this coming year. And, and really and truly, as we talked about, Dr. Park is exactly right. We're gaining 1,000 students a year in the county, but the majority of the, or the overwhelming majority of those numbers uh, geographically is in the Cane Bay area. So we're growing from 140 to 150 kids a year at Cane Bay High School. So you take out 186 this year, <laughs> but really you're taking them out from Sangaree, but you're adding them from their, from their geographic zone. So in four years, Stratford and Cane Bay are going to be overcrowded. It's just a fact of life. So why, why, should, why should we piecemeal it now and then have to come back later on and do it again? Those are my thoughts. So I, in, I'm in favor of B. And, and my, one last thought, or one last fact. I've spoken with um, all three principals of the three schools affected. They all like B. Does, All does, it, does anybody on the board like A? Sounds like A's off the table. Yeah, no. It just scoops out the middle of the, I don't like you're going across the street. I'm going to one school, you're going to the other. Right. Mm -hmm. The highway I can live with. Just across the neighborhood street, that's tough. That was the concern from the community members. Overwhelming that night to me, especially in, in writing, was that you were scooping out and making kids separate. Um, so if anybody, if nobody is going to support A on Thursday night, can we take A off the table and just present B and C? Mr. Chair, I prefer the natural boundaries that was mentioned in C uh, because you do have some roads there that uh, is easily to identify uh, and boundaries easy to identify, even though we may have to do something else later. Folk usually are more apt to go with boundaries that are well identified than just randomly talk about an area. Uh, the one thing, Mr. Chair, <coughs> if you look at the, what it does, it it moves the entire Sangaree school over to Stratford. And it helps you as far as an aligned feeder system. And where you have split feeder systems, you run into issues uh, with A and with C, you have a split feeder system in both of them. The key thing when we told Mike Miller to come up with these lines, we looked at number of students. How many students could we capture and fill up Stratford to lead the overcrowded conditions <coughs> at Cane Bay? And that was the reason that the first map was done as it was. In looking at giving you the other two options, it certainly gives you those pros and cons. You've got good natural boundaries with both B and C. The only problem with B is you're going to be a little overcrowded. But as I told you last time at your last meeting, one of the issues that you're going to have at Stratford, unless things change, is you've got a lot of the, the areas right around Stratford High School that are aging out. A lot of the people that are living there don't have children going to school. So the district, as far as Stratford is concerned, is not going to be growing That's that right. rapidly. That's another factor you really need to consider. Any other questions on B and C? Um, we're an hour behind, but this is important. And we can debate it at Thursday's meeting, too. I think today is just if there's any questions, anybody needs facts, let's go ahead and get them now so we're equipped to debate this and talk about it at the next meeting. Is there anything on the guidelines that anybody is... Opposed, I mean, just adamantly opposed to from the sibling clause to the rising 10th through 12th graders to athletic eligibility, then let's put that out as proposed. And what, what did y'all decide about A? We're going to keep 
the three. Scrap it. I'll say put. Don't make it complicated. Just B and C. Because none of us going to vote for A, so there's no reason to pretend like we're going to. Yeah, no. I think A's <laughs> off the table. The debate is between B and C. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Don't waste time, man. Right. <laughs> Madam Chair, so we can we can actually ask Mr. Jackson to to talk about the transportation thing between now and Thursday mm -hmm. and to see what we can come up with there. And be prepared to present what we found. Sure. Okay. That's I mean, reasonable. I think we need to answer to the community what whatever analysis we did, why it's feasible, why it's not feasible. They know their kids are late to school already right now. I mean, you know, they, they know the struggle we have there. So I think just be up front with what we've, that we've done our due diligence of what they ask us for. Thank you, Dr. Parker. Just no, you're good. Moving to agenda item 2B, district donation of land to Sangaree Royal Road Roundabout. Superintendent Ingram, you are recognized. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, uh, we have with us tonight Frank Carson. Uh, Frank, you wave and uh, probably ask you to uh, answer any technical questions that we might have. Uh, board members, you may remember a couple months ago or so, uh, you agreed to... Um, contribute $200,000 uh, or an amount not to exceed $200,000. Let me be specific as Ashley's getting ready to throw something at me. Um, uh, to construct a roundabout at the Sangaree uh, Royal Road and I think Schoolhouse Road. And upon the research, uh, it looks like we're going to... The Sangaree Middle School, according to Mr. Thomas, was built in 1979. And that um, we own... Uh, we need to deed 0.32 acres. Is that right, Frank? If you, if you don't mind. Uh, 0.37 acres. Oh, I'm sorry. So we need to change the... Uh, we got that. Uh, we need to deed that to the county, correct? And then you would... The county would construct the project... And then it, what did you say about the DOT? That will help me out with that. It becomes then, uh, if you could come to the podium just for a second, if you don't mind. I believe then that it's turned over to the DOT, correct? Yes, sir. The, the right of way extends into Schoolhouse Road for a distance just so the tapers from the roundabout can be finished out and the right of way would be conveyed to DOT at the end of the project. And there's a little bit of property that's, that's needed for the pedestrian overpass. It, it certainly would alleviate traffic, help things out there, and it sounds like a good... Yes, sir. Joint this time project. I'd like to make a motion to grant the superintendent the authority to deed or donate 0.37 acres to Berkeley County for construction of the Sangaree Royal Road Roundabout. Second. Second. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. And this is just being voted on by the committee, I think. Yes. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the motion carries by a vote of three to zero. This time I'd like to um, entertain a motion to adjourn this committee meeting. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>